after having done some research based on the questions I had from people concerning what the best indicators were for trading boom and crash, I decided to go on a journey. I embarked on a journey where I did a comprehensive research to be able to come out with indicators that people can use to, you know, better their trading experience on boom and crash. Because I realized that a lot of people are losing a lot. Uh, indicators giving false signals here and there. Um, complain about indicators uh, they not being effective what are the best time frames and all that so I just thought that I should take time to do my own research and see how best I can help the boom and crash EA community with the best indicators there are for trading boom and crash so you're welcome to boom and crash EA boom and crash expert advisor where we are we are aiming at being the best boom and crash e channel or boom and crash channel that invests in educating people to trade better on this kind of synthetic in this market so let's begin let's talk about the five best indicators for trading boom and crash These five indicators I'm going to show you um, are indicators that you can use on any other market. But I feel like uh, let me lower it down to boom and crash so that you can understand it in respect to the psychology of the market we are trading. That being said, it doesn't mean that other indicators that you find uh, here in your trends and oscillators are not good indicators. You know, they are good indicators. But I feel like these ones are more relatable, they are more used and and they are more used because people are getting results from them. So I want to show you right now what these five best indicators according to my opinion are in no particular order. So number five is moving averages. This indicator combines price points of an instrument over a specified time frame and divides that uh, divides by the number of data points to give out a single trend line and this can help to determine the direction of the current trend so I can go to insert indicator trend now you realize there are trends and oscillators volumes Bill Williams and custom indicators so we can find this under trend moving averages and say we can set it to maybe 10 now 10 simple there are four here simple moving average exponential smooth and then linear weighted but i'm just going to touch on simple and exponential then you can apply it to close apply it to close simply means that it's going to calculate now whenever you see 10 period it means 10 trading days so we are looking for the average trend line over 10 trading days that's what this means and the larger the period the, you know whenever you have a set of data the more the data is the more accurate um, a research or you know a, a target objective you are looking for can be arrived at so the larger the data set the better the result the larger the data set the the more accurate the result should be so if this is just 10 you'll be less accurate if you are trying to look at a higher time frame or you're trying to look at something that is big are trying to cover for something big so 10 simple apply to close means it will apply for 10 trading days at the close of each candle okay and so on and so forth if you change it to low it would consider 10 uh, trading days 10 trading days in respect to the low of each candle right and you can choose the style and all that so simple moving average good if you want to find a simple moving average of, of the current candle it's just the the highs and lows divided by two but it's not now you see if we're just to be doing highs and lows divided by two this line actually should be in the middle of this because that will be midway that will be the average but it's actually considering five trading days into the past that's why even though it's a simple moving average this line is not in between this candle this line is not in between this candle because averagely an average figure should be in between two points two high points the average should actually be the middle but it's not in the middle because it's considering five it's considering sorry ten it's considering ten trading days into the past 
that's why it's, it's 10 so that's for simple simple is calculated simply by you know dividing it by the the number of trading days or looking into the past by that number of trading days now if this is changed to exponential exponentials come in when you want to uh, see price trends over larger time frames like 50 days 200 days and so you realize in the boom and crash community there is the popular 200 ema which can tell us the trend of the market over a long time frame or a long time period so from here it's telling us it's going to trend upward so if you're using 200 ema you realize you are able to you are able to get to know where the market will be heading something like this now immediately the price or the candles cross this you know we are in a certain kind of upward trend so when all the candles are above the 200 ema we are in a bullish bias we're in a bullish bias where price is you know we are bullish the market is favoring all the bulls that's what it means and when it falls under the 200 ema it's, it's favoring all the bears so there's a massive sell here and there's a massive buy over here so that is how 200 EMA can come in to help you. But the, the, the failings or the shortcoming, the weaknesses of this is that it, uh, it may give you a false signal like what we have here and you might blow your account. So there's always a, a strength and a weakness of each indicator that I'll be talking about. So let's, let's just uh, insert another one. You can also insert two moving averages to help you we can make this 50 50 and 200 and then we make this black and then we can take trades with crossovers but the problem with this is you know is is for long trades if you're scalping you can't use this because 200 ema is not for scalping little candles you would have to decrease this 200 to a smaller number so that you'll be able to scalp so you can go with crossovers 20 and 50 at this point you sell at this point you buy at this point when the red which is the 20 crosses below the 50 you sell here and then you buy here so that is how you can use the moving average to, moving averages to help yourself to trade more effectively right so let's move to the next indicator at number four Bollinger Bands and uh, Bollinger Bands are envelopes that, that are plotted at a standard deviation level either above or below a simple moving average of the price so this comes with a, um, a default setting of 20 a 20 period that is 20 trading days into the past and two standard deviations or the standard deviation level of two rather a shift of zero and applied to closes applied at the end of every candle or when every candle closes that is when it's applied so for for this you can click ok and what we see is we see an upper band we see a lower band and we see the simple moving average of 20 that is moving in the middle of the two bands now if I go here let me make this thicker so good and if I go here and I insert um, a moving average trend indicator of 20 the same 20 what you are going to see is that is is moving very close to the the center of the bollinger bands because the the moving average that is applied is 20 just as this is so i think this is supposed to be simple let's see when you switch it to simple you see the exact same thing it falls on it perfectly why because it's applying a 20 simple moving average okay i'll delete this uh, let me go to my indicator list and delete my moving average good so there you have it and then um, now um when you see the bollinger bands tightening it indicates a, a sharp approaching price movement in any of the directions for instance if you see that it tightens here you see Bollinger Bands tightening I think where was it I saw it somewhere 
let me go back okay i'll teach it from this angle if you see the bollinger bands tightening if you see them getting close to one another it means that price is about to move in sharply is about to move sharply in a different direction or in one particular direction so when it's tight it moves sharply it's a steep slope in one particular direction so you would have to use price action to be able to guess correctly or predict correctly where the the branch is going to head towards so if it's if it's tight it means it's, it's going to curve sharply into one particular direction so when you check now this is it so it's tight it's also trying to uh, communicate a message that is a sharp movement over here and then it tightens so you see that this side loosens up this side loosens up this is tight this is tight this loosens up and it gets tighter again so when it gets tighter what happens there's a sharp movement in price okay okay now in strong trends the price hacks a band envelope for prolonged periods so this is strong trend so it, it sticks to the envelope for a long time now the the bollinger band is not predictive that is the feeling the shortcoming of the bollinger band is not predictive it's only reactive it reacts to price and it moves along it cannot predict that okay this is what's going to happen but it can give you a reaction that will make you know that if price is hugging the end of the envelope which is here then in the future it's going to move back into the bands that's what it, it can tell you so it's a lagging indicator it lags it, it's not predictive it's only moving with price so you see from here it doesn't move into the future like the other like that of the other indicator we, we would see in the in the course of what i'm teaching but it's at the very tip of it, it means it's only reacting to price so if you want to trade for short term don't trade for short term you can apply you can apply this you can change this to 10 10 moving average that is simple and a standard deviation of 1.5 okay then this is for short term trading so what happens is your bands become smaller and then you know that when it hacks or this envelope side of the envelope eventually it's going to move back so when your your bollinger bands are small by decreasing the moving average to 10 you are trying to trade for short term you are scalping the market so you, you decrease your moving average and your standard deviations so you realize the upper limit of the band and the lower limit are not so wide apart but they are moving along with the price so at this point in time you know that i'm going to sell and then it comes in i'm going to buy and then it moves in i'm going to I'm going to buy and then it moves in all right then for medium term you change your 10 to 20 and then change your standard deviation to 2 and this is medium term trading this is not so long a trade we are going for and it's not very short it's just medium term maybe you are picking about 10 candles under say m5 or m1 that's medium term okay let's switch back to each one that's medium term setting and if you want to look at the long term you can switch this to 50 and change your standard deviation to 2.5 and this is long term this is long term so when it, it hugs the envelope and then you see that it's coming out you can go for a sell and then eventually it's going to move back and hit the other end of the envelope okay so it, it touches this hugs the one at the top comes down to hug this one goes up to hug this comes down to hug this that's long term right so that's for uh, uh, Bollinger Bands you can use these swings to help identify the potential profit target you want to uh, go for right so we look at the next indicator number three the RSI the relative strength index now this is a, a technical indicator that looks at the past and present and it tries to predict the future so uh, one of the strengths is that it can identify uh, this is uh, an oscillator 
so we find here RSI let's go with the 14 um, 14 days or the 14 period 14 trading days apply to close of every candle and then you can choose the levels but before that let me just say that uh, it, the strength is that it can identify overbought and oversold conditions in the market in respect to what is being traded the instrument that is being traded so we can go with the typical 70 30 levels i'll delete my 80 and i'll delete my 20. i'll maintain uh, we'll come to this later now i'll maintain this and i'll go with my dodger blue color increase the thickness now this is it 14 this h1 so i'll switch to m1 your favorite <laughs> all right let's go to the current time frame let me switch to no m1 is fine for now just for scalping purposes so the rsi 14 period is telling us the average gain of apps and the average loss of downs for 14 trading days so it's it's trying to tell you it's trying to calculate into the past 14 trading days so it's telling you that the average relative strength of, of this particular market price compared to the last 14 trading days is at 12.34 which is here so the current level is here until maybe there's a spike happening and then this changes so that is the relative strength is is it compares strength relative to past data so if i change this that's why personally and I, I personally i like to use 40 40 okay so 40 prevents the rsi from touching the zero and touching the 100 level so because of that i'm able to trade within this range but the failings of this is that even though you see there's a wide or there's a, there's a steep slope upward but then the rsi seems to be moving downward so you see this you see this okay and then you see you see this okay that's understandable then you see this and here you see this so this is moving upward this is moving downward so that is the feelings of the RSI. I cannot put into consideration every kind of market turn because if, if it did, then we'll always be right. But that is the feeling. The real markets, the, fail, the failure of the RSI is that the real markets don't always agree with the technical indicator. So over, because of this, overbought and oversold levels may fail to reverse the directions on the market. So this then as is going down, but here it's deceiving us it's it's going up or better still this rather is deceiving us because this is the real thing as someone said the market never lies or the market is never wrong is your opinion that is wrong so the market is right in moving upward uh, averagely you know averagely it's it's probably consolidating or maybe moving up a little bit but this points downward so that's the shortcomings of the RSI but you know I prefer it because I mean when I set my RSI to 40 and it touches now this is boom boom is always selling until the opposite trade happens so if it touches my 70 level I know that it's a good sell so I can come in here and sell once it touches it I know I'm going to sell and get something which is here okay I'm going to sell and get some 10 candles okay so for that I will always set it to 40 but if you set it to 14 you're going to struggle because there was a time you know when i started trading boom and crash uh, initially i set my rsi to 14 and i thought i was on top you know 70 30 buy sell you know take away the profit uh, be a millionaire overnight and all that but i realized that there were times rsi could actually get to zero for a long time for a very very long time rsi can actually trend which market was it was it I think it was boom thousand uh, let's check it here boom thousand recently something happened on boom 1000 um yes here there this is it this is what happened on boom 1000 see this this is crazy even on the rsi 14 it was at zero for a long time from this point from this point that it touched zero here 
to this point where a, a little spike occurred was how many minutes let's check this from here and move this to here is 73 73 bars 74 bars rather which means one hour of 14 minutes right one hour 14 minutes it was still at zero so for over one hour your rsi of 14 period will be at zero and you'll be surprised this is how you blow your account yeah this is how you blow your account and you think the market should retrace but it kept going down even by twice the same length before you know it retraced just a little bit up to here so if you're still in the market hoping for a full retracement oh you would have blown your account into negative one billion yeah so that's it for the rsi um don't over rely on the rsi don't over rely on the rsi and use a, a higher figure go back into the past by maybe 40 days and i think that will help all right so we move on to the next indicator ichimoku kinko hero yeah, speaking japanese right here ichimoku kinko hero now the ichimoku uh, is a trend indicator so you go to insert find your trend and then ichimoku kinko hero now the parameters are the nine period the twin six period for the kijun sen the nine for the tekken sen and 52 for senku span b and these are the colors these are the default colors but this i changed this to dark green or forest green then i'll increase the thickness these ones and i have this so the ichimoku is one of the very few indicators that tends to tell you the future together with the next one we'll be seeing so this this is the current price level but then we see it moves 26 periods into the future 26 period into the future uh, taking into account you know 26 trading days into the future based on past data so it's kind of some uh, artificial intelligence that plays with the ichimoku so let's start with the lines now this i don't think i increase the thickness of this this is the nine period line the <coughs> sorry about that this is the conversion line and this blue line now this is a nine period this blue line is the 26 which is the baseline now this blue line tends to find the support and resistance so when you look at it most of the time it's horizontal it has kind of a horizontal flat line because it's trying to find a resistance for us it's trying to find a support for us okay so when the price uh, the candles move under it is looking for a resistance and when the candles move above it is looking for a support so we can use this this is more like um, an indicator that tends to show us the support and resistance and the momentum and trend directions of a market okay now you can also use crossovers to trade you can use this nine crossover crossing below the 26 to enter a cell so when the nine crosses below 26 you can enter a cell but always be mindful you, you, you won't always be right as indicators uh, are not 100 percent correct or accurate and then um, you can use uh, a crossing above to buy so from here we have nine crossing above 26 and then we buy then we have the lagging line which is the the chiku span the chiku span i think so when you when you open the parameters you can see here but when you come to colors you see the chiku span this is called the lagging line and when the lagging line is above the candles it shows a bullish bias let me go back okay so for here we have bearish biases where the lagging line is running under the candles this indicates a cell and when the lagging line is far away from the cloud which will come to the kumo cloud it's a heavy cell one of the things you don't want to do is to is to trade is to trade at the the small portions of the cloud when the cloud is about to translate from one color to the other at that middle point you don't want to trade there because those ones are just turning points so that's the lagging line and when the lagging line is above the prices it's a bullish bias for instance you see the candles here and then the lagging line is here this is a bullish bias indicating that 
is, is going to be a lot of bulls in the future or in the, in the coming times. And then uh, we have the Kumo cloud, which is this. Now the Kumo cloud is made up of two spans. I would click here. It's made up of the single span B and single span A. Span A isn't here because it picks the same period for both span B and span A. So only span B appears here. Then for the colors, we have the up Kumo and we have the down Kumo. So the what happens is this is the cloud. This is the main indicator of the Ichimoku cloud. This is why we call it the Ichimoku cloud because this thing is the cloud. This is the cloud. The red lines are seen here or the, the looks like pink, looks like orange, looks like red. I don't know what color it is. I'd have to reconfirm. So the, the span A and span B. Now the span B is the the red line which is this okay and then the span a is the green line which is here so they are also plotted 26 trading days into the future you see these spans move into the future with this is span b and this this is span a the green so they have moved into the future telling us uh, on average you know what's going to happen in the next 26 trading days per mathematical calculation so it's a, it's a lot of calculations here and there but we can't go into that i just have to tell you um, what, what's good uh, for you at the basic level now one of the buy signals we can consider going in for with the ichimoku cloud is when the prices are above the cloud for instance this is a buy you see you see the prices above this cloud this is a buy and when you see the prices below the cloud, this cloud, the prices are below the cloud, it's a sell. Okay, so trade cautiously, apply risk management whilst you are using this indicator. And then one of the strong buys is when you see, now this isn't a strong buy because the 9 crosses below the 26 and we have the lagging line indicating a buy. But this is indicating a sell. So we have a sell here, you have a buy here. This is not a strong buy. But when you have the red, which is the 9, crossing above the 26, and you have the lagging line also above the cloud and above the candles, that's a strong buy. That's a strong buy. But always be mindful of risk management. And the strong sell is when this crosses below the 26, 9, which is the conversion line, crosses below the base line, 26 period and the lagging line is under the candles this is a sell and also you realize that the cloud is above the candlesticks this is a strong sell very very strong sell so that is how you you use the ichimoku cloud and it's it's more about finding support and resistance you also find out that uh, the span a which is the green line is also trying to find a resistance here so it draws a vertical line. When it's not vertical, or, sorry, it draws a horizontal line. So when it's not horizontal, that means that it's still searching for an appropriate support and resistance. So it's trying to find this resistance here. And when you come here, this is also trying to find the support here. So that's how this works. That's how this works. Very, 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 very simple. Well, but at first glance, it looks quite, uh, you know, scattered and scary. Right, so that's about the Ichimoku. We'll go on to the next indicator, the MACD indicator, which is fully known as the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. So you go to Insert Indicators Oscillator, because MACD is an oscillator, and then you check parameters. We have two exponential moving averages. We have the slow one and we have the fast one, 10, 26, and then the nine simple moving average of the MACD. So, um, but you realize MACD, according to uh, you know some research, some traders call it the most valuable tool in a technician's toolbox. And it consists of two lines with three MAs. That is one simple moving average and two exponential moving average. Exponential because exponentials carry more weight than simple moving averages. So I would increase the thickness so you see properly. 
I'll maintain everything here just changing parameters I change this from black to blue and then okay so we have our signal line which is the red giving us a signal and we have the main line which is the blue so on phase value at phase value if I put a trend line here a vertical one of course if I put it here now you see that from the MACD if the main lines cross now there's a, a zero baseline the zero here is supposed to be the baseline so I'll place I'll place this there and this is simply indicating that whenever the main lines are above the zero the zero level which is this uh, let me set it to zero the value should be zero so exactly zero when the main lines are above zero it signifies a buy so MACD actually can tell you MACD together with Ichimoku can actually tell you what's going to happen in the future so from here the lines reduce and enter a buy zone and they are coming down attempting to enter a sell zone but you see if we zoom in you realize that it's increasing again so this is the failings of MACD it may not be able to accurately predict where a market is going to head because we thought it was you know going to come down but we see it going up and even though uh, I think I think there's it there's a gap here now this gap is going to fill up later on after the market clearly forms because sometimes it doesn't clearly form until the price has moved and then the indicator follows suit so from here we have a gap here because uh, the market hasn't clearly formed you see what's happening now it's, it's trying to form well it just spiked so this is going to increase so when it's sure that is now selling it will increase the bars and this will fall down and will fall in place but at face value you can still to a certain degree predict that from here we are going to be buying soon and then from here we are going to be selling soon so you have this and then you have that so when the main lines cross below the zero baseline there's a sell and then it crosses above it's a buy but I also want to show you another buy and sell signal when the signal line which is this red one when it crosses above when it crosses above the main lines at this point at this point then it's a sell this point is a sell when the signal line crosses above the MACD line the MACD main line it, this is a sell so you see a sell here but it's not strong enough even though in the future it sells let's look at another place I like to bring this to a place where there's a sell here signal line crosses above the MACD main lines and we have what we have a sell it's telling us that you can now sell here so if you sell here and you are patient enough you can take your profit then when the MACD so a sell here again a sell here again when the signal line crosses above I think the market has been mainly selling so the 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 buy zones are little and the sell zones are a lot so at this point it's also telling you to sell at this point it's also a sell so when the signal line crosses above not when it crosses below when it crosses and heads upward this point is a sell good so when it also crosses below there's a buy this side is a buy when it crosses below this is a buy so at this point we can also what we can also buy this is a, a buy for us this is a buy good so that's how MACD works it's very, very simple so these are my collection of personal collection of five best indicators for trading boom and crash let me know which one is your favorite what you trade with let me know in the comment below like this video and share with your friends i hope you learned something because I, I found this to be highly educative myself it also forced me to get to my research desk and find out more things i didn't know initially so thank you very much for sticking around thank you very much for liking and sharing the video subscribe to the channel for more fresh content concerning synthetic indices bye